will continue uh, where we left because after chokhi is over then hence forth uh, the period which is dedicated to silk worm rearing is called the late is silk worm rearing uh, as i already mentioned that uh, third instar is a intermediate instar generally the overall requirement for this instar will be similar to the chokhi chokhi rearing instars that has to be maintained and uh, the fourth and fifth is slightly different not in many aspect but only now we can feed the entire the coarse mulberry leaf spacing will be more wider and uh, late is rearing is very important from the commercial point of view of silk worm rearing reason being that it is the, this stage where the silk cocoon formation will take place at the end of it number 1 number 2 most of the leaf around say 95% will be utilized during this period only then the silk gland will be uh, very active and will be developed from fourth instar onwards to so whatever leaf uh, quality and quantity is being fed that will be converted into silk protein during this instar so what will be the outcome what will be the like um, uh, the production level of at, at the commercial level will depend uh, mostly how these instars have been managed as you can find it here also that silk worm during this period body size will increase 133 times and nearly 1000 times increase in silk gland weight so that is very very important actually for uh, the quality of cocoon and the quality of silk we can expect from a particular rearing this is the optimum requirement protocol for uh, third fourth and fifth instar temperature as i already told that best temperature is between 24 to 25 that is all other scientific findings but uh, if it is so it's 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 very good excellent but if it is between 24 to 25 it is very good go up to 26 not an issue it is around 23 and 22 will also be manageable but not below 20 20 degrees centigrade and not beyond 28 or 27 anything above 30 will adversely affect the silk worm rearing and if it is viable time when it will be maybe it is tough to have a successful crop so it has to be because what we can do actually because if we do in uh, a rearing because seasons are identified for that that's because in north north and north western india where there is a where there is a uh, severe fluctuation say we have a different climatic conditions during each season we have identified the most suitable seasons in north india uh, spring crop starts in the month of uh, march up it starts in the month of february then uh, in sub tropical areas like uh, uttarakhand himachal and other parts it's uh, in the month of march march and april by the middle of april the spring crop is harvested it is over the reason being that why we have the limited number of crops in north india including it will be delhi also the reason is that that uh, after october as i uh, already told uh, there will be no mulberry leaf or the quality of mulberry leaf will not be of the optimum level so spring rearing will be over in the middle of uh, april after that there will be a uh, hot hot conditions we can have the rearing inside a room but for that we will have to have a say controlled environmental condition by putting air conditioning and all that will be very costly and it will be not economically viable that is one aspect and furthermore the mulberry can be grown into the open garden only that time if it is a very severe hot condition that may also affect the quality and the quantity quantity of mulberry leaves but as of now from the r&d point of view we are trying a crop in between spring and autumn this uh, initial ex- experiment with with viable time has also been successful for that we are shortlisting the what should be the most suitable hybrid combination according to the climatic condition because mulberry will grow with the mulberry not an issue so but in southern india which are the suitable parts in southern india there 
there is a round the ear activity sorry guys there is a round the ear activities that i told that there is a batch brushing the garden has been maintained according to the requirement of the brushing and the latest rearing so it is going on there that's because the more than 90% of the contribution in the silk is coming from the southern states only in india so relative humidity is also have a very crucial factor so we will have to maintain it and between 75 70 to 80 or 75 or 80 up to 80% but during the molting period we will have to reduce it up to 60 to 65% that time we required because the, there will be a casting off of the skin that time the bed humidity and the overall uh, this room humidity should be less so that the mold mold uh, the wash will easily come out of the mold and the duration of the mold also will be within the desired protocol quantity of leaf will slightly increase at this stage third instar will be 50 to 60 then to 200 to 250 depending upon the combination being reared and in the final instar from 1200 to 1500 kg of mulberry leaf this is the kg of mulberry leaf means the mulberry leaf only not the twigs number of feeding generally it is recommended four for the late in star but it it can be between 3 to 4 three also can be managed but only that there is no dryage of mulberry leaves which is being fed to the worms in the bed and we maintain the strict timing for feeding the worms it cannot be that we are giving uh, a three feed only any time we should start at least 5 in the morning between 5 to 6 then in the day time between 1 to 2 and in the night not before 9 because if we do it in the 5 and 6 in the evening then there will be a huge gap till the morning we feed the worms it will be almost 12 hours that is beyond the prescribed limit once worms start feeding then it is very sensitive otherwise if it is not fed for say 5 to 6 hours even up to 10 hours initially say some under some emergency worms may revive it should be fed within 2 hours only but if it is not suppose i have faced this situation when i was coming from the bangalore along with the worms when i was somewhere in odisha worms hatched i i had already procured a black uh, bag for that but it has but in emergency situation if the feeding has not been resi- resumed or the initiated then it can sustain up to say 6 hours 7 hours not beyond that uh, practically but it is written that if, if, even if it is 10 hours they they may revive they may revive but once it is the, the feeding is started then anything beyond this 10 hours is not good for the overall health of the Uh, silk worm so we will have to maintain the strict strict timing means if you are going with the three feeding we will have to maintain the three fe- three feeding in the eight hours duration if you are going with the six feeding then the timing will have to be six hour duration now how to manage it that whether the feeding is proper or not generally how the silk worm is uh, behaving in the bed number one number two what is the your timing if you have if we have maintained the fixed timing say we are doing in the 6 in the morning then the next timing is say 12 then we will have to see that what is the behavior of, of the feeding of the worms around say 10 if it is in an active phase and the, it is finishing of the earlier feed feed which has been given at the 6 in the morning it means the feed the feed was sufficient enough if we see that the worms have been fed in the morning in the 6 around and at 9 in the entire leaf has been eaten or utilized by the worms it means it is underfed because every time we cannot wait the uh, the leaves so it has to be managed according to the growth of the silk worm only how it will happen when the worms is entering into the mold that time if it is not a molting day then it should be perfectly about 2 hours before of the scheduled feeding it should finish off if it is if it is beyond that say the next feeding is at 2 2 or between 1 and 2 and we see that around 2 there is still mulberry leaves it means it was overfeed 
<coughs> generally we call it the over adoption of technology so that is also not good there should not be overfitting there should not be underfitting it should be perfect according to the need and we can judge it according to the fitting behavior and the leaves in the tray of the uh, of the feeding stand or the rack whatever it is so it goes like that but uh, spacing we will have to increase from say 100 up to 700 final stage as you already uh, uh, see that it is almost more than 100 times increase in the size so this this, this table is very very important to conduct self bound rearing and uh, to be very very uh, meticulously planned that uh, we should be very close to all these parameters. As already I told that there are contributing factors, but all these things should, should be intact. Now climate, we have already discussed, can be manipulated up to certain extent in inside a rearing room. But if it is not, and it is not because even if we use the air condition also to certain degree also, only it can manipulate the temperature. It cannot bring if some outside is 45 degree and we will say it should be 20 immediately inside a rearing room it won't happen so we should be very very close to the natural condition so that there is a scope and the margin for calibration congenial climate no doubt have a uh, positive impact and uh, if it is not so then the adverse climatic drives towards the a poor harvest, adoption of uh, adversely tolerant mulberry genotypes. Yeah, then we will have to according to the what is our rearing condition. So we will have to decide the habit combination for that because we have a whole lot of uh, recommendation made by Center Silk Board that what what type of hybrid combination, what type of uh, 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 races can be reared during the um, different seasons in the different parts of the country. Mulberry leaf, as uh, we know that we have a recommendation uh, for southern India. For north India, if we say, then S146 TR10, S1635, S1. These four are uh, uh, good varieties which have been recommended under different uh, All India Coordination experimental trials this is the outcome of those and it is continuous continuous process in Santa Silk board we are coming uh, out with some uh, new and promising variety as well but it is has to be I will show you that how it works in Santa Silk board how, how a variety is uh, or a particular genotypes is recommended for uh, commercial exploitation these are the host plant and silk bomb hybrids and breeds recommended by the R&D Institute of Santa Silk Board for different regions. V1, 1635, S1, G4, C2038 and TR23, S1, 146 for, for different reasons. In North and North uh, uh, Western India, S146 is recommended for hilly areas. TR23 and TR10 is also good. TR10 is also good for hilly region. Then in uh, Eastern region and the North Eastern region, this variety, this C2038 is doing well. It has been developed by our Barampur Institute. In Santa Silk Board, we have primarily three R&D Institute for Mulberry. One is at the Mysore Center of Sericulture. Research and Training Institute, it is based in Mysore, looking after the southern and the central India. Then we have one institute at Barampur in uh, district Murshidabad in uh, West Bengal. That is, uh, uh, institute is taking the R&D needs of the uh, eastern and the northeastern India. Then the third one is at the Pampur in Kashmir, near Srinagar. That is uh, taking care of the R&D need of the north and the northwestern India. So from the different institute, time to time, different varieties and the hybrid combination has been recommended. But for that, for practical purpose, you need not to worry about that because whatever demand will go from either from the institute or from a particular uh, organization, NGO, Centre Silk Board release the uh, area specific seed only. You can see that uh, in the greens, some tooth at uh, 
At present, the three mulberry varieties is under national trial at different locations, and uh, AGB8, PPR1. So this is the process that how we go in Central Silk Board. There are different uh, different process for that that I will show you next. This is the technology transfer and how the technology developed and carried to the uh, for commercial exploitation other through departments. It it started from the lab takes three to four, uh, five years. Then technology um, once developed is go to a OST level. We call it the on station trial. Campus of Delhi University, either the college can can be one of such OST trial station. And then OFT, it will be the some farming group. Generally, we do it through the state governments, state agriculture departments. At the OFT level, we will have a certain set of farmers, say ten farmers minimum, where we will we will check the technology or any product which has been developed. From this level, it go to the larger population scale, where the sample size will be more, and the data will be accordingly calculated. Then there are a evolution mechanism in Santa Cruz board. Whatever the OFT data, OST data, or the large scale trial is being conducted, that will be evaluated by the expert committee, expert R&D committee that is started with the each institute. It's a research advisory committee at the H, H institute level. Then at the national level, we have the research coordination committee headed by the eminent scientists. Two of our RCC uh, members, research coordination committee members, has, I think was a part of this program. Dr. Dandin and uh, Professor... Um, uh, uh, yeah, Krishna Kumarji. Both are members of the research coordination committee of this Apex R&D body. So I think uh, both of them might have given their wisdom in uh, in this aspect. So this is the chart that how it comes. So nothing has directly come from lab to either any institute or organization or farming community. There is a process for that. Now Mulberry Garden. In the morning when I came here, we were discussing with uh, Boraji about this spacing. So these are the more spacing. If you are having a bush garden for Mulberry, there are different spacing. I think um, uh, it has been already discussed also. But for this region, this this three by three spacing, three feet by three feet, spacing is more best suitable for our condition. And if you go for the tree mulberry plantation, that is also a very unique unique idea because beneath a tree we can have a integration of the other crops. So economically it is more viable, especially for the northwestern India, where we have a limited number of crops. So once a farmer go for intensive mulberry plantation, his field will be idle for six months. But if you go for the with the integration, then you can utilize the same piece of land for, for the other agriculture activities and the sericulture as well. I think that model is more suitable and more convenient to our condition. This is the model I was talking. This this model is developed by uh, got opportunity to develop by me only uh, at Jammu. This this model is uh, at Jammu, and we have integrated it with, with the cereal crops, maize and wheat. It can be done with any other crop because mulberry is a perennial tree, as I told you. It has a deep root system, whereas the cereal crops have a shallow root system. So there is no competition. It has been checked, and there is no crop loss also initially only when the plantation has to be established. There may be minor disturbance, otherwise it can go along with the traditional crops. And this is a bush mulberry plantation. If you go with the intensive mulberry plantation, whole field will be occupied. So these are two options. In Delhi also, when you develop a model, I would like to request you to have this tree-based model also. Very small batch of trees. You can have only, say, 10 trees for the practical purpose. This time in the bush garden, I have already shown in the morning. Silk bomb X should be free from uh, all uh, uh, this um, this is causing agents. Uh, generally, when we call the seed, generally speaking, we call it a seed, but uh, in scientifically, uh, in Santa Silk Board, it is disease free lanes. Means it has been thoroughly checked and examined. There is a very robust system for that. There cannot be any egg bond disease, and there is only one, only one egg bond disease that is pepperine that can be transmitted. If it is checked, those lots are rightly rejected at our um, uh, seed production center. So whatever seed is being received as a disease-free laying, it is certified. Once the certified seed has been received, if there is a disease incident, it is because of the rearing management. Mostly nothing to do, either the handling of the seed is poor, 
incubation is poor or the once the seed is prepared and uh, schedule has not been properly maintained that may contribute otherwise it is the external factor which will adversely affect the silkworm rearing that's the crux of it yeah how it should be it should be disease free no dead x or very less dead x no hatched x should be there when you receive the x if it is in a hatch condition it will adversely affect the rearing and this infected seed this is the already i mentioned that you can disinfect the x sheet or the loose x as well before it is used it, it, if it has been kept long in uh, like transportation and otherwise this is already i have shown you morning rearing technique has a very important role and decisive role we will have to be technically sound and we will have to adopt those technical parameters which is recommended for the silkworm rearing i think the manual which i have provided gave in depth knowledge about that i will not repeat it here so please uh, read that mostly the only the practical aspect has been given in that write up science you know better than me i think in, in many aspect only the practical aspect of sericulture i have included that will make the silkworm rearing easy even if a layman will start with that and reading that he can start the silkworm rearing it is started with in the morning in the continuation incubation i have already told you seed has to be incubated once it is received then the chocolate rearing we have already covered then the late late stage we are already discussing then the silkworm disease management i will discuss it in in the tomorrow morning along with the spinning and the mounding importance we have already discussed incubation uh, the condition is temperature 25 degrees centigrade yeah very important thing that when the seed is coming from the industrial drainage of center silk board say it is coming on fifth please set right the incubation of the incubation room at least 48 hours before that because all of a sudden the environmental condition will not change it takes time at least 48 hours the temperature will set inside a room so if you want 25 degree centigrade for incubation you can start it even start bring it for 15 then to 20 then to 25 so like that only the photo period is 16 hours light and 8 hours dark fan and the black boxing for 48 to 78 hours this is one thing but when we go for the active silkworm rearing this photo period will be re reversed means we required 8 hours light only otherwise a dim light inside a rearing room even the tube light is not required the room light is sufficient only when we feed the silkworm that time only give the proper light so it, in combined it becomes around 8 hours that is the best photo period suited for silkworm rearing these are the rearing rooms uh, generally from southern india rearing houses this type of rearing houses can be constructed for commercial purpose only as i told you for demonstration purpose a suitable room one room is sufficient rearing equipment uh, incubation equipment for incubation we only require this incubation frames rearing trays or stand or racks for fruit feeding if we are going for leaf harvesting feeding then we require leaf, uh, trays only if you want to go for the shoot feeding that is also a very good economically viable the entire shoot is fed on silkworm i'll show that i think the photo must be there then the rearing stand leaf preservation chamber as already shown in the morning then the bed cleaning nets room heaters sprayer hygrometers maximum minimum thermometer flame guns it is a flame gun from di disinfection it is used with the cooking gas and uh, uh, for the wall and the roofs but if it is not available then we can go for the conventional method say the is spraying of uh, chlorine dioxide or the bleaching powder or the other utilities say this uh, brush chappal uh, waste newspapers gunny cloths and the masculine cloth so many other things which is already listed in the morning there is a long list for that now the shoot feeding i was talking about this is generally this is for northwestern india only because in northwestern india there is a floor rearing as well in the floor itself the farmers don't have any uh, like um, uh, improved equipment they will they will go for the floor rearing as well even the cords and everything is used 
but in southern india it is more systematic so we know that southern india is more perfect so and even the grass is being used for the mounting I mean, mounting means uh, tomorrow we will discuss the mounting as well mounting means when the ripe worms are put to a place for spinning the cocoon that is the mounting it mounts up so grass is also used so by the rnd intervention of central silk board no grass is now recommended only the improved crustable mountages or the rotary mountages is used and either the trays is used which i already shown in the morning or this type of racks will be used in the rack we can give the entire shootlet cut from the tree or the bush and spread over to the rack it is easy and leaves are more fresh and it it, it reduce the labor also so it is the same thing the floor rearing this is the shoot fitting all you can see this farmer is fitting the entire shoot this is excellent rearing and we have a very good harvest if the racks are provided and it is it saves almost 60% of the rearing labor only thing is we required more spacing for that because the entire shoot will be there air and light already discussed play a crucial and decisive role it should not be room should not be air tight in fact during the rearing period only during the incubation period if there is a issue of temperature otherwise there should be a cross ventilation in a room if when we are using a such type of room we have a window this side this time window we will have to open it during the rearing period only thing is that we will have to check with the this uh, temperature if it is not coming down it is in the optimum le level keep it like that only and the rodents and all is not coming up Uh, inside the rearing this thing that has to be maintained leaf preservation already discussed this is the method again trays again bed cleaning third in star once one day interval if it is in third it's a recommended if it one day interval and fourth and fifth every day bed cleaning through nets only it can be done with hands also but please don't touch it better to spread a net it's easy and you will just pick up the nets and put it in a at a different or tray or place and uh, can wipe out the entire uh, uh, refuse of the uh, rearing bed feeding 3 to 4 time a day even for late is also you can go for three three feeding you can check it once four feeding is recommended but if the rearing condition is good leaf is not getting dried up go for three uh, three feeding eight hours or the four feeding six hours duration entire leaf for shoot feeding should be given depending on the rearing stage i will say started from third in star onwards if you are hesitant to start at third definitely from the fourth give entire leaf expect when the worms are in advanced molting stage when the molds it is being settled because during the molding also we cannot stop it immediately after first when you see the first symptom then you will have to give at least two feeding before to that that time you reduce the leaf size otherwise give entire leaf and if it is a shoot fitting then the entire shoot give quality mature leaf at this stage in the morning we are talking about tender and succulent leaf now the mature leaf for this stage avoid tender or and over mature leaf also sh should be avoided if a garden is uh, had not been properly pruned we will see that during uh, autumn crop in uh, north india we will see the over mature leaf in that condition what we have to do, do actually suppose it is a long shoot of mulberry harvested from a tree or bush you will see that in the bottom up to 2 ft there will be mature leaves beyond that there will be fresh loaded leaves so that 2 ft portion should be cut down and you give only a tip of the leaf should also be cut down from the glossy leaf onwards this, this much portion only from the top and from 1 ft or 1 and 1/2 ft from this side generally when i take crosses for the farmers i advise them to take this for the cattle feed utilize as a cattle feed and for the middle portion if the plant has not been pruned if it is pruned then there is not a problem it will continuously good for feeding a leaf chamber preservation already discussed then this is the requirements the select line for 100 dfls if it is 20 kg it is more than sufficient even 10 kg will do but 10 kg is minimum but if it is 20 kg then you can spread it inside the rearing room at the entry level also and whatever the worms is being sorted out from a rearing bed that should not be put in open there should be a any plate or paper for that put a lime on that pick a worms from there with a stick and put it on that lime so that will re reduce the uh, this uh, pathogen load inside a rearing room 
bad disinfectant what i told that is the recommended bad disinfectant this is the lime not lime it is either vegeta ankush there are so many products recommended by central silk board so that required 4 kg for 100 df plus there is a timing for that before resuming the feed and the fourth day of the final in star after that we don't give this uh, vegeta and uh, ankush and all lime it lime can be given old newspapers around 20 kg or 10 uh, 15 kg gunny cloth and masculine cloth for spraying the uh, lime film maintain temperature 23 as i told you already morning uh, by, in the beginning 65 means 65 should should be during the molting period best is 70 to 75 per percent if go to 80 percent not an issue but beyond 85 90% then one will have to be alert that if it is for a longer period it may adversely affect the silk worm rearing so that time what i told you morning we will have to have the lime application daily even the application of lime because generally in our area sometimes it's a continuous rains when the lime inside a rearing entire rearing room open the doors and this thing if a fan is there for 5 minutes or so the the fan can be used so that there is a proper circulation not continuously but for a certain time only to just air circulation keep the mountains in airy and sh- shade yeah because uh, sometime if you do not have mountains i think this condition will not come to you because on a small quantity but sometime farmers face this situation then if if you are using any leaf or the grass that is to be kept inside a shady place so that it become perfectly usable or good for the a mounting of the silk worm this is not this is not applicable for i think for experimental or limited rearing then harvesting once the cocoon is formed in the late age and the mounting is done spinning is over then after the sixth day the day we started and the cocoon is formed cocoon will be formed within a limited time after that there will be a, a total transformation most will be shrink inside the tomorrow i will explain it all so sixth day not not prior to the sixth day reason being that that time it will be not totally metaphor into a pupa then if there will be a pressing then there will be harm uh, to the other to pupa or the, the caterpillar being transformed into pupa that time cocoon may be damaged and cocoon uh, uh, will not be that much compact so on sixth day you can put out one or two cocoon from the mountains hold it in your hand and the shake it there will be a sound that the pupa is inside it, it is detached from the uh, this uh, uh, filament formation process and it is now separate and uh, uh, it is formed so it is ready to harvest at the green cocoon we call it uh, at this stage thank you after harvesting this will be the shape of the final shape of the cocoon this is the harvested cocoon and from the here onwards the post cocoon activity is started when we will have to reel it transform into yarn then weaving it making it to the silk fabric then going it to finally to the end users so in the sericulture there are multiple layer of activities it is two part one is the core agriculture up to cocoon formation is the core agriculture or once the cocoon has formed it is core industry so it is called the agro industry and at every level right from the beginning of the marbury plantation raising of the nursery the saplings there is a scope of employment generation then silk worm rearing itself is a economic activity then only conducting the chalky rearing and selling the chalky worms is a economic activity you don't go for silk worm rearing only produce the quality marbury leaf there will be buyers for that you sell that only there is an economic activity then again once you produce the cocoon nothing is remain unsold as on date the good quality cocoon is being sold at around 600 rupees kg per kg no any other cash crop no other cash crop except saffron is as much costly per kg as silk and as per the process goes 56% of this entire cost goes back to the primary grower 
until then unless we had a viable economic chain in place this is a huge economic potential and i wish that people like you once jump into this it will go to the wider corner and nooks especially the young students and the young minds they have so many innovative ideas better than us and they can really help in the coming days thank you